Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as the facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters are not able to hear or see you. Second announcement, you can use that Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. My final announcement, this presentation is being recorded and you can access the recording at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Cal Art. Hello, obviously you guys couldn't hear that introduction. Thank you so much for turning it over. Um, my name is Kevin Whitmire from CalArts. I'm here with my colleague, Eve LaFountain, who is incredible. Hi, Eve. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> um, we definitely could put up, pull up a visual aid, but the reality is we have six minutes and we have some great schools here today. So I just wanna kind of uh, kick it off really quick and give you a little taste of CalArts. I wish I could open up the campus doors and have you come on in. Um, so one thing that makes us pretty unique is we do have six schools under one roof. So we do have art, dance, film, video, music, theater, critical studies. Um, and then I think I missed dance. There we go. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, um, all these six schools under one roof, it's very vibrant because uh, collaboration and interdisciplinary work is something that happens not only um, in the curriculum, but it happens um, in your everyday life at CalArts. So sometimes the best possible resource is, is the other artists that you have access to at your fingertips. And I think it's one of the true gifts that CalArts offers alongside of a mentorship process. So I do feel like um, a lot of different schools offer, uh, you know, faculty that is working artists, but I would say that the um, CalArts walks the walk and talks the talk with that. A lot of our faculty, if you just look them up or see on our website, they're doing a lot of really amazing radical work as well. So they mentor you, not just artistically and make sure you kind of graduate, but they also are an artistic parent as well. So they can tailor an individualized uh, four-year experience at CalArts. Um, where are we located? We're in California. Um, so we're just outside of Los Angeles, so you can kind of throw a rock to downtown LA. So the industry will always kind of be organically woven into the curriculum here at CalArts. Um, the other thing that's nice is we do have a lot of theaters um, among the CalArts campus, but also in downtown Los Angeles, we have the Red Cat Studio. There's so many different opportunities to perform and create and develop your own work. We're pretty intimate. So we're a little under 1500 students. Actually, I think we're a little over. We have six more than 1500. So we're a little over 1500 students. And that encompasses both master programs and master level, as well as our undergraduates. So you do get a BFA or an MFA. Um, so it's very intimate program. So definitely it's a seven to one student faculty ratio. You know, you definitely get a lot of individualized experience with that. Uh, the other thing I like to highlight is in the application process, sorry, I'm looking at my time. I know I'm talking a mile a minute, but we'll have time for questions. Yeah. Um, is that we don't have a minimum GPA requirement. We also don't require any SAT or ACT scores. So some of you might be like, oh, amazing. And then others might be like, I'm really smart, which is also amazing. Um, we will look at your transcripts though. I will I'll highlight, but I like to highlight this because your audition or your portfolio really truly matters. Um, and it's really what we're looking at. Um, so as an artist, you know, I feel like your career started yesterday. So we want to make sure we have a lot of opportunity that you're ready for this high level training. It's definitely more of a conservatory style approach in this, um, private uh, college. So it's pretty unique in that in that regard. Um, we also do require some, oh my gosh, I'm thinking really quick on the fly. We also do require two letters of recommendation. And we always recommend that that comes from people that know who you are as an artist and, and your art making practice. The School of Art um, lives in the lens of conceptual art. And that means the idea determines the medium. Yeah. So we at CalArts, I think that that trickles into all of the performing arts majors as well. Why are you on stage? Why are you developing work? Um, you know, these are questions that you should start asking your yourself because um, we love to see that in like the artist statement as well. I think artist statement is a bad word. I, I like the name uh, personal diary. You know, I think that it's an opportunity for us to get to know who you are. Um, and the other thing is uh, I'm one of six. Eve is also one of six um, associate directors here at CalArts. So if you are planning on applying, it is, um, I really rec recommend jumping in our email boxes and saying, hey, I have this question, or if you need help building up a portfolio, 
portfolio, or you have questions about your audition, it can definitely help. Um, we're definitely pushing the boundaries of what it means um, in all realms of art making. So we really are looking at the forefront of art. And when I say that, um, you know, we had a female Hamlet. It was amazing. So I say, you know, if you're auditioning in the theater school, um, definitely take advantage of gender bending, definitely take advantage of really um, choosing work that again speaks to who you are as an artist, because that's really what we're passionate about here at Cal Arts. Um, some things about the campus. Uh, we do have on-campus housing. Um, we're also a pet-friendly campus, so you can have your dog, your cat, your rat on a leash, what have you, um, but you just can't have them in the dorms. Um, so you can seek all campus housing as well. It's definitely very intimate. It's a cozy feeling. I think that um, sometimes you'll leave a rehearsal or um, a class maybe late into the evening and you'll hear a saxophone in the distance. It's so romantic. It's just what your spine needs. Um, we offer information sessions as well. So it won't be as quick as I'm going here in the six minutes. Um, but I recommend signing up for that. That's all available on our website. Our application's live now. And you can sign up for our auditions now as well. Um, all of the counselors and the associate directors do offer office hours and it's an opportunity for you to jump on zoom like we're doing now and ask us any questions and we can definitely take advantage of some of the questions that you may have now as well um even i will be hanging out for a minute um so i know that uh i will propose some questions uh at the limited time frame sorry i'm reading the chat um so we'll answer those probably at the end and one of the things i want to leave you with is we're um we also are really known for animation and filmmaking. So I think as uh, performing artists, we really look at like dance in animation, dance in art, dance in cinema, and that trickles into theater as well. That trickles into um, music as well. So there's, again, those interdisciplinary opportunities are amazing. I think you leave with a degree, but I think what's worth its weight in gold is the roster of phone numbers you have in your cell phone. See, it's timing me right now. But that also, uh, there's a lot of different people that I call on on a regular practice. So. Without further ado, I'm getting close to my six minutes. Eve, I don't know if you wanted to add anything in the last second, you're so charming. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out and I really appreciate it. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to the other really great schools. Yeah, thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate you uh, doing that for us. If you have any questions, we'll be around so you can put them in the chat. We'll be answering your questions. And again, you can get in touch with us. Um, if you just go to calarts.edu slash explore, that's where you can get more information. We'll also drop a link in the chat so you can sign up for more. Thanks. Definitely. And I did this uh, signal because that was our six minutes. So we're out. <laughs> so it wasn't to you guys. Thank you so much, Eve. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin and Eve. Thank you, Jasmine. Our next presenter is from the Cornish College of the Arts. All righty. Thanks, Jasmine. Um, Pull this all up correctly. Fantastic. So everyone, my name is Albert Rubio, and I am an admissions counselor here at Cornish College of the Arts. So Cornish is the premier visual and performing arts college of the Pacific Northwest. We're located in Seattle, Washington, and we are over 100 years old. We're also one of the few arts colleges in the country where visual and performing artists actually get to study together. So this is our founder, Nellie Cornish, and she and the many teaching artists who followed her believed in an innovative approach to arts education that was exposing the artists at Cornish to multiple different forms of art. And that perspective really led to some of the greatest innovations in the arts during the early 20th century. It shaped much of how we create and appreciate work today. And it also helped to put the Pacific Northwest and specifically Seattle on the map as a thriving arts community. And our mission here is to provide students who are aspiring to become practicing artists with an educational program of the highest possible quality in an environment that nurtures creativity and intellectual curiosity while preparing them to contribute to society as artists, citizens, and innovators. And we realize this mission by offering baccalaureate studies in the performing and the visual arts and by serving as a focal point in our community for public presentation, artistic criticism, participation, and discussion of the arts. Our degrees are also designed to help you build all of the skills that you'll need to navigate the professional landscapes of the 21st century. And we educate you in critical thinking, creative problem solving, collaboration, as well as the generation of new work. You'll focus on traditional, interdisciplinary, and experimental art forms. And the faculty members at Cornish are actually professional working artists, and they're committed mentors as well. So they maintain thriving careers in their respective fields. They maintain all of their industry connections and that really provides them with all of the knowledge and the skill necessary to train artists of the 21st century because they're still making work in the 21st century. Our community is also dedicated to small classes, mentorship and personalized instruction. So the average class size at Cornish is about 13 students and the faculty to student ratio is one to seven. 
So as an artist studying at Cornish, you're gonna get all of that individualized and personal instruction. That's super important to successful arts education. Cornish is an urban campus and we are located right in the heart of downtown Seattle and we are immersed within the arts and culture of the city. Seattle is one of the world's epicenters for the visual and the performing arts and that really makes it an ideal city to pursue an artistic education. Seattle houses some of the country's best live music, theater and dance companies, a popular music scene that has garnered national as well as international attention. We've got over 20 live theater venues. And we also have Pioneer Square, which is known as one of the country's most prominent art gallery districts. We're also home to the Fifth Avenue Theater, Seattle Art Museum, Seattle International Film Festival, and the Upstream and Bumbershoot Music Festivals, just to name a few of the many, many arts organizations you'd have the opportunity to interface with. Essentially, Seattle really is a thriving professional community for practicing artists and designers, and Cornish has been at the forefront of that creative scene for more than 100 years. In terms of our exact location in the city, we are located in the South Lake Union District. That's where Amazon maintains most of their campus spaces. And our campus is surrounded by creative agencies, architecture and design firms, many nonprofits, and we're within walking distance from all of the prominent creative spaces for performance, art, and culture. You're gonna find Cornish alumni, faculty, and current students making lots of bold, innovative work all over the city. Students also have access to a variety of state-of-the-art creative and performance spaces, and these are available for use by all of our majors, regardless of their discipline. So visual artists make art in individual and shared studios, materials, labs, editing and recording suites, and much more. And performance artists are rehearsing, performing, and learning in a wide array of practice spaces, black box studios, historic concert halls, and the iconic Cornish Playhouse and the Al Haddock Black Box Studio, which are located in Seattle Center, which is most famously where the Space Needle is, and it also houses all of the city's large-scale arts and performance venues. We've also got three new spaces coming online, a brand new sculpture studio, a new 1800 square foot gallery space, and a brand new theater as well. So currently we're training students from 38 states and 18 countries. Many of them live right here in the Cornish Commons, which is our state-of-the-art 20-story residence hall that we had built with artists in mind. It features plenty of space and lots of special amenities like private bathrooms, movement studios, practice rooms. We've even got an art studio. 20th floor is also reserved just for our residents and it boasts amazing views of the city. So these are the majors that we offer. We are sometimes known as the BFA school and the visual arts, you'll see the majors on this side and in the performing arts, we've got these majors. For music students, we offer a Bachelor of Music, and then we also have some Bachelor of Arts options that are specifically designed for transfer students who are coming in with an associate's degree or equivalent amount of credit so that they can complete a degree in two years. So in 2019, 2020, we actually became the first and the only art college in the country to lower our tuition. We lowered it by 20%, and we award over 4 million in scholarships each year to over 98% of our students with all admitted students being automatically considered for those merit-based scholarships that are guaranteed for four years. If you're interested in applying, you can go to apply.cornish.edu forward slash apply located on our website, or you can apply through the Common App as well. Priority consideration is gonna be given to students who apply for admission and financial aid by our early action deadline of December 1. And if you get your app and portfolio and audition done by that date, you'll know whether you got in by mid-December. And then all those who are interested in applying for scholarship consideration should apply by February 15th. After February 15th, applications are considered on a space available basis. Thanks so much for listening, everyone, and hope that some of y'all will consider applying to Cornish this year. Thank you. Our next presenter is from the Laguna College of Art and Design. Hello, thank you for having me. My name is Annie Lucido. I'm an admissions counselor at LCAD. We're going to College of Art and Design, and I'm going to go ahead and play my presentation here for you. And I'm going to start my timer so I don't go over. Sorry, one second. Okay. All right. So LCAD, we are in uh, South Orange County. So on this map here, you can see where Orange County is located in Southern California, just south of Los Angeles. It takes about um, an hour, hour and a half to get there from where we're at. And you can see there's a lot of important entertainment studios, of course, nearby, and just important, important employers in general in Southern California, of course. Um, Laguna Beach, if you've never been there, it's a beautiful, lovely beach town. It's a popular tourist destination. Uh, it was founded as an arts colony in the late 1800s. So it's kind of unique for, for Southern California. There's a big art festival every summer, tons of galleries, wonderful museum. And our campus is located in Laguna Canyon. 
So we technically have more than one location within the canyon. They're right next to each other. It's easy to walk back and forth. Main campus is kind of the more traditional media studio. Um, drawing, painting, and sculpture studios and fabrication lab are here. We also have our library, a big student lounge, beautiful outdoor park. And then right around the bend is our big bend campus. And there's a, a shuttle that gets you back and forth. This is more of the digital media campus. So this is where we have our animation uh, labs or downshooter lab, game lab, um, graphic design, entertainment design, and um, illustration classes, of course. And I'm gonna go ahead and play this video. It's just some background music. I'll just play this for a couple minutes. Okay, so a bit more about the college. So we are very small. We're a small visual arts school. So we actually don't have performing arts. One of the only art schools in, in the room here probably that doesn't. So we're ex exclusively focused on visual arts. Um, most of our majors are geared more towards the entertainment industry. Uh, animation is a really big one for us. We're really well known for our more traditional animation program. So actually learning how to draw each frame, right? Um, think like classic Disney animations like the Jungle Book, right? That type of animation, we're still teaching that here. That's something that's pretty rare to find. Um, we do have an experimental animation major now. So for anyone who's not so much interested in that kind of very traditional uh, methods and techniques, maybe more experimental methods like stop motion, um, we have that program now. Entertainment design is basically all concept art for the entertainment industry. And there's a specific um, uh, theme park entertainment class or theme park uh, concept art focus in that program. That's kind of unique. Game art is also a concept art major. It's just specifically for the game industry. Illustration is a good choice for someone who kind of likes everything. That degree is the most like customizable. Um, you can you know, pick up a bit more of the design stuff or a bit more of the painting stuff. And then graphic design, of course, is gonna be your much more uh, commercial uh, branding, marketing materials focused degree. But that program's unique because it does have an option for you to focus on apparel design in the action sports industry or just the sports industry in general. We have a lot of alumni working in uh, NFL, NBA, NHL, designing jerseys, helmets, things like that. We do have an official partnership with Vans. We have a sponsored class taught by them as well as Nike. So our design program is, is very robust as well. So we only have seven majors at LCAD. We're super small, super specialized. Okay. All right, just give me one moment here and we'll move on. I have two more minutes. Okay, we'll talk a bit about the admissions process. Okay, so to apply to LCAD, of course, you need a portfolio. Every art school is gonna ask you for a portfolio and I highly recommend tailoring your portfolio to the school you're applying for. LCAD happens to ask for major specific portfolios. So when you apply, you have to choose a major. You can't apply as undecided. That's because we don't have a foundation year. Okay, you're not taking the same classes as everyone else. You're actually taking some foundation classes with other, other majors, but you're starting right away with classes in your major. So that's why we need to see relevance in your portfolio. We need your official transcript, of course, from high school and if you've taken any college classes. Uh, there's a short essay requirement. We don't look at test scores, any SAT scores. Um, you'll need to apply through our website at lcad.edu and it's free to apply. December 1st is your early action deadline, but you have more time than that. You can technically apply until August 1st. Um, I'm gonna skip forward, talk about tuition. So we do have lower tuition for a private art school, especially in Southern California. If you compare us to other schools, you'll see it's a lot less, um, 34,600 per year. And that's before any merit scholarship. So the strength of your portfolio is really gonna determine how big your merit scholarship is. And I highly recommend that you reach out to us in admissions to give you a preliminary portfolio review so you can really optimize your chances of getting a bigger scholarship and making a bigger dent in that tuition price, of course. Okay. I feel like I'm running out of time, 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, um, ultimately we do have dorms. We prioritize students coming from over hundred miles away. Um, we have 56 beds available. So there's definitely some housing options and we can absolutely help you find housing off campus as well. So you're not on your own in that search. Okay, I'll go ahead and 
exit out of here. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Annie. Our next presenter is from Virto Education. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Marcelo Gomez, and I, the re, I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for Virtual Education. I'm going to pull up a presentation here so I can share with you guys to kind of go over a little bit of information on what virtual is all about. So virtual education is a study abroad for your freshman year of college. So these are the different um, subjects that we're going to cover in six minutes or less. And I'm gonna go through the slides really quickly so you can always visit the website to get um, to view this presentation again if you like, or you can always reach out to the organization directly uh, to speak to an admissions counselor. Uh, usually I play a video, but I am having technical difficulties to go show you highlighted points of what some of our virtual students are doing studying abroad. So people ask, where is virtual education? So right now we're in five different countries and we just added another three, um, which includes Ireland, Czech Republic, and Buenos Aires. Uh, Buenos Aires, Aires, I'm sorry, my Spanish accent is getting in the way here. But why choose uh, virtual education? It's an affordable accredited global academic semester or year. We guarantee admissions to students to a top virtual partner college and I will display the different partner schools that we have um, currently, um, over 80 different, um, different colleges that we partner with throughout the United States and about 60% of them are division one colleges. And it is a well-rounded cross-cultural experience focused on personal growth. So when students travel, they interact with a lot of different cultures and hopefully that will help them grow as an individual. So these are some of the different colleges that we partner up with. Go to our website to see the others that we have there, but just to highlight a few, uh, the University of Oregon, University of Tennessee, even Lynn University in Boca Raton, and also Pace University in New York City. So now that I was able to share the partner college with, with you, I wanna talk a little bit about a highlighted point. Um, a lot of our slides, and I'm gonna show you with the different locations, will cover all this, depending on which country you go to, Program cost varies anywhere between 5,000 and 22,500. Financial aid is available to those who qualify. And there's also internal scholarship and external scholarship as well, depending on your needs. The duration is 14 and a half weeks for the entire semesters. And, and typically students earn between 12 to 16 credits per semester. And uh, the only thing that students are responsible for is the airfare to and from the country and any associated fee with visas and that sort of thing. Um, and the accommodation could be dorm, student resident or home state. And the age requirement varies for um, country to country. So I go through the slide, you can, I'm gonna highlight a few of the differences of the different um, locations. Um, these are the five different locations currently. And like I mentioned, uh, we are gonna launch three other locations with no IRS, um, Ireland and the Czech Republic. So Seville, uh, it is a student resident or homestay. It is a roommate situation. So you'll share the apartment uh, with four or three other virtual students. The tuition is be about 15,000 before financial aid and student must be 18 before traveling. Uh, this is what the anticipating excursions that students would do. That's included with the tuition, all the excursion activities and events that we have planned for our students. Um, this is what the uh, residence looks like in Seville. In Florence, uh, it's about $18,000 before uh, financial aid and any uh, scholarship. Uh, student must be 18 before they travel with us. And on the left hand side here, I forgot to point out, these are the classes that students can anticipate to take. Uh, the classes are all general education credits. Um, so that's why we guarantee acceptance to the partner schools because that was part of the agreements. Um, for students to transfer as sophomore or second year freshman. So a lot of the classes would be general education classes that students would take. These are some of the anticipating excursions that students would do in Florence. This is what the housing looks like. It is an apartment. And this is what the campus looks like. It's not too far away from uh, the housing. Uh, then there's London, about $20,000 before financial aid. And student must be 18 before traveling. These are some of the anticipating excursions that the students would do. And this is what the apartment looks like in London. Uh, and this is also the campus, which is not too far away from student housing. 
And then Hawaii here is about 22,500 before financial aid. In this situation, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is included uh, with your financial aid. And these are some of the anticipated excursions that goes on in Hawaii, as well as student housing. And then Costa Rica, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is also included in the tuition before financial aid, and it is dorm style. Uh, the one thing I recommend is that if you are not a big fan of bugs, then I don't recommend Costa Rica. Um, and this is the student dorms here. I encourage you guys to follow us on social media just to interact with other students that are traveling with us currently and get a more idea. So how does it work? You apply for admissions and you receive a decision within 48 hours, complete one or two semester um, travel, uh, studying abroad with us. And then once you're ready to transfer, you get to choose up to five colleges for free, meaning that you don't have to reapply. Um, at the Virto Education, we do not charge an application fee, so it is free to apply. And like I mentioned, five different colleges that you can choose uh, for free when it's time to transfer. If you have any questions, you can scan the QR code here, and I'll be more than happy to get in contact with you and go over everything in detail, or you can always email me, and I'm also going to post my contact information in the chat. Thank you guys for listening, and I hope that I get to travel with you guys very soon. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, Marcelo. Our next presenter is from DigiPen Institute of Technology. All right, hello everybody. My name is Adele Karoom. I'm here from DigiPen Institute of Technology. I'm gonna start by just playing like a 30 second video just so that you can see some, this includes some samples of our student work and then I'll talk about our degree programs after that. Okay, and then now I'm going to switch to a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so my name is Adele Karoom and I'm here from DigiPen Institute of Technology. Um, we were founded in 1988. Our president and founder, Claude Comer, was a founder of Nintendo Software Technologies. So um, we started as an animation and production company providing training to people interested in working in the game industry, and we grew into a private four-year college from there. So our areas of expertise are computer science, game design and development, music and sound design, and digital art and animation. Um, DigiPen is located in Redmond, Washington, so we are just outside Seattle. It's about 16 miles east of Seattle, so it's a great location because it's a little bit quieter, but you have access to all of the resources and industry in a city. Um, we have 1,121 enrolled students, 87% are domestic and 13% are international students. Um, we're the first school in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming. You have eight undergraduate degrees and two graduate degrees. Our average class size is 18 and our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1. Um, our graduates are credited on more than 1,600 commercial video games. So if you want to see a comprehensive list of all of the game studios people have worked for or companies people have worked for and also games people have worked on, and also some kind of descriptions and articles about uh, different alumni from our college, our alumni success page on our website is really comprehensive for reading more about that. Um, we ranked at the top five video game design school by Princeton Review for the last 10 years, and our students have received more IGF awards, that's the International Game Festival, um, than any other school in the world. And our student films have also received um, 280 awards and festival selections for their animated films. Um, so our academic approach is a combination of academic fundamentals, where you're learning your basics, knowledge and theory, and getting a really good foundation, um, and then also project-based learning. So at DigiPen, you go directly into your degree program. You don't take like general education classes and then declare a major. You apply directly to your degree program and you do that all four years. Um, and so it's very focused. Um, students take a pretty heavy course load, um, but the result is they get really good samples of their work. So the project-based learning includes game teams and animation teams, and then a variety of other types of projects. But particularly during third and fourth year, you're working um, on 
game and animation teams with teams of on average seven to 10 people, sometimes larger, sometimes smaller. Um, and you have a professional title similar to a title in the industry um, so that you have a strong portfolio. Um, these are our degree programs. We have a regular BS in computer science, a BS in computer science and machine learning if you're interested in data analysis and AI and things like that. Um, for game design and development, we have a BA in game design, which is primarily a design degree. Um, and then we have a BS in computer science and game design, which is more focused on computer science with some game design coursework. Um, and then the BS in computer science and real-time interactive simulation, we call that RTIS for short. And that's a lot of words, but really what that is, is computer science for game development. So it gets into um, building your own game engines and higher levels of programming, graphics, physics, um, and higher levels of math, um, specifically for programming for games. And then we have a BFA in digital art and animation that starts with one year of traditional art and then does 2D and 3D digital art and 2D and 3D animation. And then for music and audio, we have a BA in music and sound design. That is primarily a music program with theory, composition, Position, but you also learn sound design, sound tracking, um, and you get to work with both animation teams and game teams. Um, and then the BS in computer science and digital audio is primarily a computer science program. But if you're interested in learning how to program specifically for sound, there is some overlap in courses for the sound design classes with the music students. Um, so you learn that sound tracking and sound creation, um, as well as um, how to program specifically for audio. Um, so this is a little bit on what we're looking for. Um, we are test optional this year. Um, we have an application on our website. Um, for the BS programs, pre-calculus is required for most of them with the exception of BS in computer science and game design. Um, and try to take physics if you can, if you're interested in those programs and some computer programming. Um, for game design, we're looking for a broader foundation. Math through pre-calculus is recommended but not required. And there is a design portfolio of writing three essays about three things you've designed. It can be a game, but it can also be something else. Um, for the BFA, we have portfolio requirements on our website. There are five prescribed pieces and then five to 10 additional pieces of your choice, um, primarily focusing on strong foundation and drawing from observation. And for music and sound design, we're looking for proficiency in music. There's a portfolio requirement for that as well. And you can find more information on our website for the requirements for that. So I'll put some links in the chat with contact information for me and for our outreach department. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out if I can answer any questions for you. Thank you. Thank you, Adele. Our next presenter is from Kaiser University. Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan. I'm the admissions officer from Kaiser University Residential Campus located in West Palm Beach. And I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the process today. First and foremost, Kaiser is built, we, we have a very career first, um, you know, mentality here. Um, we try to provide a hands on education to you guys from day one. Um, and especially for those students that get into their major as freshmen. We do allow that. Um, some of our majors are a little bit more rigorous and there are other ways of getting in. Um, we, tep we have a 15 to one overall student to faculty ratio. And over the past two years, we've awarded 76 million in scholarship for purely academic and need-based students. We also offer athletic scholarships as members of the NA NAIA conference. We're also ranked fifth in social mobility by US News and World Report. First thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is something that you guys are probably in the middle of, or at least like starting to think about and getting started on is the application process. So we at Kaiser, we are rolling admissions, which means as those uh, you know, applications start piling up, we're gonna be looking at the ones that came in for, you know, first first. So you want to get that in as soon as possible. There are two ways to do this. You can do it through the common application or through our website. All you need to do this year is send in your transcripts. Now we are test score optional. Um, some of our programs, mainly nursing, does require our entrance assessment. So if you are interested in nursing, get in touch with us and we could definitely talk you through that. 
from there, you know, you got to fill out your FAFSA and attach your schools. Now, if you have any problems, if you're the first child going to college, you know, whatever the, the situation is, if you need help, we do have financial aid officers available, give you a call, you don't have to come to campus and start, you know, getting you through that process. From there, you just send in your deposit and join the Seahawk family. Like I said, we try to be as hands-on with our programs as possible. Um, now, we have over 100 great programs. Now, the five largest are going to be our nursing program, our business program, biomedical science, criminal justice, as well as golf management. Now, within nursing, you're going to get into your clinicals as soon as you're in your nursing program. So whether that's freshman, sophomore year, you know, depending on your grades in high school and all that good stuff, you will be starting to work, you know, in, in a clinical setting. Business, we try to bring in as many people into classrooms to talk, guest speakers, all of that good stuff. We also have um, one of my favorite um, things, which is our Seahawk tank, where you could pitch you know, ideas if you have them and actually get funding for them. Biomedical science, you know, we do have three concentrations in there. We have our, our medical, we have our veterinary, as well as our, I believe, pharmaceutical programs. So veterinary, we actually have stables on campus for our equestrian team, you will be working hands on with them before you even go to veterinary school. So that'll be a nice little benefit for you. Um, applied engineering, another great program. We have two campuses outside of the country, one in Nicaragua, one in Shanghai, China. Once, you know, travel gets better, I know people probably aren't jumping to leave the country at this point, but if you're like an uh, engineering program or anything like that, and you want to go, you know, study abroad, you're more than welcome to do so. If you have any questions about any of the programs I didn't mention, feel free to go to the link below. When you get here, you're gonna expect to, you know, at least most, most of our students stay in the dorms, you know, at least their freshman, sophomore year, you are able to stay in throughout. Students are able to bring cars to campus, you know, from freshman year. So if you're road tripping across the country to school, you know, don't worry, you could keep your school, uh, your car here. We do have suite style residence halls with 24 hour security around the campus as well. Um, AC, cable TV, all of that good stuff. We're located 10 minutes from downtown um, West Palm Beach. We have Olympic swimming pools on campus, esports facilities, as well as driving ranges. Just a little bit about the neighborhood. Um, we are located a short drive from West Palm Beach Airport, 47 miles of Atlantic coastline just for West Palm Beach itself. We are the golf capital of the world. So if you're into golf management or one of those programs, it's the perfect place for you. If you don't have a car, but you wanna be able to enjoy what Florida has going on, you can take the Bright Line, um, which is a train to Fort Lauderdale or Miami. They are finishing it up. So you will eventually be able to take it to Orlando as well. There's also festivities that you know you wanna make it to. We have Holiday in Paradise. You could see the, uh, that's a Christmas tree made out of sand. Um, as well as Clematis, which is in the center photo. It's just a really Thursday nights. They light up all the, you know, businesses very beautifully. There's, uh, you know, food, all of that good stuff. It's definitely an enjoyable, you know, time. A little bit of what we do to, you know, help our students succeed. Um, you can sign up for free peer tutoring on the website below. Uh, but, you know, some students are shy. They don't want to, you know, sit with another peer, that's fine. We do offer, you know, fixed office hours, you know, for all the professors. They also, you can email them if you have class during that and set up, uh, you know, a personal time to face to face. So don't worry about that. Um, we have career services that are here to help you when it comes to setting up, um, setting up, uh, to, to preparing for what's next, your resumes and all that good stuff, as well as professors and program directors able to help you if you wanna get an internship before you graduate. We highly recommend it, but if for whatever reason you can't, you won't not graduate because you didn't have a, you know, uh, internship. We just, we, we prefer. We also have, um, we are members, as I said before, of the NAIA, we are and of the Sun Conference. Um, we have 20 NIA. Uh, athletic teams with esports now too. And our cumulative average is a 3.02 for our athletes. Just a little bit of power combat and COVID. We also have virtual visits. So I know you guys are all the way on the West Coast. So if you guys aren't able to make it here, every month we have a virtual open house you guys can partake in. This month is November 27th. So definitely get in touch with me if you guys are interested or go to KUCHawkNation.com. Follow us on social media. And there's my information. I'll put it in the box. 
have a good one, guys. Thank you. So that concludes the presentation portion of our session today. Now we're gonna to transition to the Q&A. I wanna encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn on your cameras and I will post a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. The question is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? So we'll start with Cal Arts. I think one thing to remember about Cal Arts is that we are a school that is very specific for people that are really dedicated for, to their artistic work already at the time of coming in, but they're also really open to collaboration and to pushing the boundaries and to experimentation. So we know that it's not the right place for everybody, but for the people that it is right for, it's the best place that you can possibly be. I don't know if Kevin wants to include something else. No, I concur. I concur everything that Eve says. I also just really want to highlight interdisciplinary um, and just that opportunity is just really worth its weight in gold. Indeed. What's the next? Um, I think similarly, uh, there's a lot of similarities between Cornish and Cal Arts, so like sister schools. Um, uh, definitely also the citizen part of artist, citizen, innovator at Cornish uh, is something I'd love to highlight because when we look for artists, we are interested also in how they're using their art to um, better their communities or um, affect social change. So artists who are interested in using their art as a catalyst for those types of things are really exciting to us as well, as well as artists who are interested in collaborating across disciplines and making new work and innovating in their field. What I would say about Laguna College of Art and Design that would be ideal to remember is our alumni benefits. That's something that's kind of unique to us. We don't have an alumni membership fee at all. You can come back and audit classes for free for the rest of your life. As an alumni, you don't have to pay into that. You can participate in everything that we have going on on campus, our industry open house nights forever after you graduate. So I think that's kind of special. Uh, one thing I would like for you guys to remember about virtual education, it was, if, if I had the opportunity to travel my first year of college, I would have done so. It's a very positive experience, although the classes are very vigorous, um, but we have implemented uh, fun things for the students to do um, while they're away. And yeah, it, it would be a, the best decision you ever made to travel abroad your first year of college. For DigiPen, I would say um, it's really those team projects, particularly game team projects, but also animation projects, but just being able to work with a group of students and create something while you're still in school that's really like professional level, everything from the music to the programming to the building the game engine to all the art and just to put that together with a group of people is a really amazing experience and, and a great thing to be able to graduate with. I just, you know, pretty much depending on what you want to do, you know, you will be able to get a good hands on education in that, um, as well as have that small, uh, you know, teacher to student ratio that will allow you to be successful. Thank you all for your responses. So we are approaching the end of our college fair for today. But before we go, I do have a few closing announcements. As you exit from this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. I also want to remind you that you can access this recording by visiting strivesand.com slash WACAC. I wanna thank all of our amazing presenters for joining us, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you so much.